and I just took part in my first um, seminar sort of class kind of thing. It was plotting versus pantsings. This house is amazing. It's a massive Tudor mansion. I'm looking at on fantastic grounds and a big garden. Partly there's a dog. I haven't seen the dog yet. But I'm very excited for the dog. I'm in this huge room with two beds and a massive wardrobe that can... You can fit about eight bodies in there, I think, which is pretty cool. Everything is like made of timber. I think like they must have cut down an entire forest just to make this. So I'm about to go into a different um, seminar. I'm not entirely sure what it's on. I think it's on editing. I'm, I'm not sure when I'm actually going to write is the only thing um, because I kind of am interested in all of the all of the seminars, all of the little classes, so I'm really not sure when I'm going to get time to write and this is the thing when I'm around other writers talking about their projects and stuff, it really makes me want to write and I've I have a lot of new editing ideas and a lot of new things that I want to get done in my book so I need to kind of carve out some time to write so I might actually do that right now and just sit down for 15 minutes before this class and make some notes and hopefully be super antisocial tonight and just do my writing because that's what we're here for. Yeah, so I just finished the second class, which was about copy editing and sort of refining your drafts and not using the phrases that you always repeat. Mine personally is more than a little angry or more than a little frightened. It's always, it, I used to think it sounded cool, but now it just irks me if I see it anywhere in anyone's writing. And we just had lunch and I've actually been saved by another writer because she asked the chef to take her to the to the village to go to the shop and um, she said that she would pick me up a bottle of wine uh, which is very nice for her so I won't be the only the only person without a recreational beverage tonight which is nice you know get to fit the stereotype of the the drunk Irish writer that's gonna be cool um, there's a couple more things this evening that are specifically about gothic writing and hauntings in writing which is right up my alley and then after that we have a critique group uh, some people sent in a couple of pages I forgot to do that but they said that they would print off a page of my work as well um, it's a story I'm quite excited about I got the idea from a creep dive podcast so if you're not listening to the creep dive podcast it is fantastic it's loads of weird true stories that are crazy and filled with horrible things but sometimes funny um, and this one in particular was about cannibals so I have a short story now about cannibals I'm, I really want to get right and I think if I did it right it would it would be a great story so I'm working on that so, so yeah I'm gonna try and read their stuff and then I'm gonna do maybe some reading I'm currently reading The Between by Tananari Ju which is so far, I'm about 25% through, um, it's creeping me out, it's weird. I still haven't gone outside or anything. It's apparently gonna be really bad tomorrow, so I might go check out the garden just before the classes start. And hope that that dog comes back. downstairs so there's a lot of free books that she's currently getting rid of and this is one that I wanted to read for a long time. I actually just downloaded the ebook yesterday so I'm hoping I can figure out how to refund that because I haven't even opened it yet. And now I have the physical copy. It's Picnic at Hanging Rock. Now a major TV series. I haven't seen that. I've heard of this book so many times and 
it's by John Lindsay and it just the idea of it just freaks me out. Partly she refuses to say whether it's a true story or not or based on a true story. I I know nothing about that but um, it looks short, it looks cool. I'm gonna get stuck into this. I have a shared bathroom. Um, it's not just a shared bathroom, it's like it's in between two rooms. So if both of us try and pee at the same time, it's just gonna get awkward. It's it's strange. Um, it's also the easiest way to access the room with a suitcase, so people are just coming in to leave their suitcases in. Basically I have to be dressed all the time, which is bullshit. Um to my channel. I actually went on the writing retreat that I've been talking about all year. Yeah, I've been talking about it since my very first video, I think. I actually went on it just about two weeks ago. So the writing retreat that I went on, it was in Wales in a massive tutor house called Trewin and I first found it through Twitter because there was a freelance editor called Vicky Brewster who she was starting up a freelance business and I wanted to get some editing done for my novel and she very kindly offered to do that uh, in exchange for money obviously so not not total kindness but she edited some of my work and then I followed her on Twitter and she's been a great resource for a lot of different things so when she said that she wanted to do a writing retreat in this awesome place and it was going to be gothic themed it was like she tailored it right for me and it was exactly what I needed right now to get my work done. That's exactly what I'm not doing. I am not sitting down and I'm not getting the work done and I think it was slowly starting to drive me a little bit insane. So just a little bit of history. Um, I studied English in college. I've always wanted to write and when I finished college I worked crappy hospitality jobs and I wasn't doing anything creative and it was driving me crazy as these things do. So I actually quit my job. I was able to do that because a family member lent me some money for like just over a month I think so that I could pay rent and everything and I started volunteering at the Irish Writers Centre and at the same time uh, I applied to get into a six month writing creative writing course called The Stinging Fly and it's a really sought after course quite an expensive course. I didn't think I'd get in. That's why I applied and then quit my job and then I got in. So they very kindly let me work at a payment plan to pay them off later than I really should have. But I feel like a lot of the good things that have happened to me in terms of writing have just been through other people wanting me to do well and they have no real they have no real need to do that. They don't they don't need to be as nice as they are being, but they're they're being very nice. While I was doing the six months course, I was working on the bits of my novel and I got some really positive feedback about that. And I just learned, I learned what creative writing actually is and what I should be trying to get out of my writing. 2018, I was in a much better job, an office job, and towards the end of the year, thankfully just after NaNoWriMo, there was no, it was really quiet, there was nothing for me to do, so. I literally just sat there and wrote and I actually, I was so sick of myself for not having my novel finished because for this novel I know exactly where it's going, I know exactly the entire story the whole way through so to procrastinate on something that I know how to get done is really frustrating. So again, losing my mind, I pushed myself and I got 80,000 words. This is actually my novel right here. So I wrote this entire thing and I printed it out so I could edit it and 
the first chapter is missing because I lost it, but I have soft copies and stuff and I've changed it so many times it doesn't really matter, but this is just the bulk of my book. And in 2019, I feel like I did absolutely fucking nothing. I was focusing mainly on my burlesque and my dancing, I was focusing on my review blog and reading everyone else's books and not working on mine and again it wasn't a super happy year for me. I've been struggling mental health wise. I should actually be at work right now but I saw a doctor this morning and he advised me to take a couple of days off so I just took a nap. Uh, the Red Bull is not medicinal, not advised at all. 2019 I got nothing done and some of the people who I'd met throughout working in their writer centre and singing fly course and stuff kind of got in touch with me and were asking me like hey how's the book going and it wasn't but thankfully they gave me another push I got a mentor and stuff so we are meeting on Monday who hopefully will give me another push I'm, I'm relying so much on other people and I shouldn't be doing that because I should be just doing my own flipping work but to stop rambling, uh, the reason that this all relates back to the writing retreat is I think it came at the exact right time. I got so many practical tips on how to get a proper polished draft finished, how to get the actual book finished to the very end, and it all ends with this. So this is a worksheet from Celine Terranova's workshop. Uh, she is a self-published non-fiction writer and she's working on some fiction at the minute and she's also a coach I think so she was she was the energy that was pushing us all through at the very back there's also this contract yes I did sign my soul to the devil what of it I told myself a few years ago that I was going to be published by the age of 25 that was kind of unrealistic but hopeful. Uh, it would have been cool, but I knew it was, probably wasn't going to happen. It did help me get further on than I would have if I hadn't started telling myself that, but right now I'm 26. And on the 22nd of April, 2020, I will be 27. And it doesn't matter when you're published, honestly it doesn't, but I need to set myself deadlines to get shit done. So this is I promise to myself that I'm going to have my novel redrafted, edited, edited some more and it's going to be polished and ready to query by my 27th birthday. I put this on I put this on Instagram, I put it on Twitter, I'm putting it here. I have two months to get this done. I have two months to get this 80,000 words of mainly garbage turned into probably a hundred thousand words of pretty good writing the best that I can make it by myself if you want to give me an amazing birthday present which why would you you don't fucking know me you can you can keep me on track on my twitter or my instagram or these videos that I'm making you can ask me about my progress you can give me positive vibes to tell me that I can actually get it done and to remind myself that I should be focusing more on my own art than other people's. Other people's art is great, but I want to get this done and I want I want other people to be able to read my art. So to conclude, the writing retreat was absolutely fantastic. I didn't tell anyone that I was going to film some bits while I was there because I was too awkward. Um, and my room was like attached to another room that you could otherwise only get to through like, I think it was the winding staircase, the really terrible one that people didn't want to take suitcases up. So they would go through my room when they had big bags and stuff to get to that room. And I only realized afterwards that I had my camera set up on a tripod pointed directly at my bed. And they must have been like, what the f Is she recording herself sleeping? Because that's weird. Or maybe they thought I was actually hunting for ghosts or something. That would be slightly less weird. There was so much food at this place. I actually put on weight. And I never put on weight when I'm away from home because I just don't eat because I'm nervous. But I put on so much weight. I met some fantastic writers. I got a couple of free books actually because the person running it brought some books she wanted to get rid of. And 
ones that I wanted to read. But I met some fantastic writers, I met some fantastic published writers, and I'm definitely going to be buying their books in the next couple of weeks. Especially Celine Turnovas, she has a book called A Part-Time Artist, and she has another book coming out uh, soon, which is in particular about mental health and artists, which clearly written for me, so I'll be buying that one as well. So I hope you're having a great Women in Horror Month, if you're a woman. If you are a women in horror, I hope you're focusing on your own horror and your own art as well. I'll be back shortly with another review for the Ladies of Horror Fiction Readathon and also maybe some Women in Horror Month movie recommendations because I watch way too many movies. Thank you for watching me rant about crap and I will see you in the next video.